There's a trend in the modern day rap industry, one that often features rappers with a past so grim that it could stain whatever kind of good name or achievements the artist tries to garner. This often involves a life of crime, wrought with violence, drug trafficking, and substance abuse, racketeering, amongst many others. Introducing popular battle rapper, better known by the stage name, Sue Surf. This is yet another tale of a man whom, despite his best efforts, just can't seem to bury the past and truly give up that gangsta lifestyle he had lived by for most of his life. Even after making a lot of successes throughout his career as a rapper, earning millions of dollars and a popularity that would cause many to support his cause, Sue Surf would end up potentially bringing all of that pedigree to an abrupt halt with his affiliations with a criminal group whom he'd been closely connected even long before he became a successful rapper. Is it possible that a large number of these rappers feel compelled to engage in criminal activity because of their gangster personas, perhaps a complex placed upon them by the industry or the wrong kind of fans? The subject of today's story is none other than Sue Surf, a very prominent American rapper, one that you might have heard of and for good reasons too. Sue Surf is a popular American rapper who's mostly known for being a dominant figure in the battle rap stream. For those of you wondering what battle rapping is, it's kind of a style of rapping often involving two or more rappers. These rappers would compete against one another to see who could produce better verses. This style of rapping is often freestyled and it's often filled with boasts, insults and disses from one performer to the other. Any fan of popular rappers like Eminem would be familiar with this style of rapping. Now, not many rappers who stick to this style of rapping always make it to the mainstreams, but there are a few who do make it work. Sue Surf was one of those few exceptions, a rapper who was mostly popular for his battle rapping skills and was able to use this popularity to reach the main stages. But despite all of his successes, Sue Surf would end up finding himself battling several criminal court cases, as well as potential harm to his own life. Sue would end up almost losing his life in a shooting that turned the streets of New York into a literal war zone. For lack of better words, it's all pandemonium with this case. Let's talk about it. Sue Surf's real name is Rajan Cox. He was born on the 15th of January in 1990. Sue Surf grew up on the streets of New York in New Jersey. This was also the place where he was born and where he'd spent the greater parts of his youth. Yo, Sue. Yo, man. Uh, welcome. You're from Jersey, right? That's where I'm from. Not New Jersey. Not Sue Surf was raised by a single mother, his father being absent for the most parts of Sue Surf's childhood. Sue Surf mentioned during an interview with DJ Vlad that growing up, he never had a good relationship with his father, but that didn't stop him from occasionally speaking to his father. Sad. I mean, you personally, did you grow up in a two-parent home, one-parent home? No, nah, yeah, one parent, but me and my mom. Okay. Where was your dad around during that time? Uh, doing what he, I mean, doing, doing father stuff, so other places, doing okay. what he was doing, you feel me? So did you have a relationship with him at all or not? Yeah, really? we spoke, you feel me? We spoke. Like, I mean, I wouldn't act like he was one of them. You know, I ain't never seen my... Growing up, Sue Surf was obsessed with rap music and would often listen to tracks made by popular artists like Jadakiss and Jay-Z. This was one of the many things that made Sue Surf end up pursuing a career as a rapper later on in his life. Another major contributing factor that stimulated Sue Surf's dream of becoming a rapper at his younger age was his mother. One time while growing up, Sue Surf's mother gave him a karaoke machine. This caused Sue Surf's love for hip-hop to bloom even further. You could definitely argue that he... When he was younger, the karaoke machine helped him to never lose sight of his dream of rapping. As much as he was exposed to rapping, a young Sue Surf was also exposed to a lot of crime while growing up. When he was 16 years old, he witnessed his first ever crime that would ultimately send him down a rabbit hole of even more crime and violence, all of which would prove impossible for him to ever truly grow out of. Sue Surf slowly began to assimilate a life on the streets into his day-to-day -day routine by the time he was in high school. He was just 13 years old at that time. It was around this time that Sue would join a notorious criminal gang known as the Rolling Sixties Neighborhood Crips. Sue Surf was attending Westside High School at the time, and he was able to remain in high school while still dealing in the operations of his new group. By the time Sue Surf reached the age of 18 years old, he would be arrested for that very first time. This marked the beginning of Sue Surf's legal run-ins with law enforcement. At 18 years old, Sue Surf was spotted wielding an unlicensed firearm. This would lead to a prompt arrest by the local police. This would lead him to spend an automatic three years in prison. Sue Surf, however, decided to legally fight this case after hiring a lawyer to represent him. He would end up spending just a year in the Essex County Jail. By the second year, he was able to win a bail for himself. He never spent a through year in prison, but ended up spending just 20 months behind bars. Prison has a unique way of changing the mind of a few. It was while Sue Surf was spending his 20 months behind bars that began to chase the path of a battle rapper 
and he proved to be particularly good at it. Sue would start battle rapping even before his 20 months started, while he was still just out on bail. And you have a strong following and you're getting the top battles, but things start happening along the way. Yeah. So um, at one point you catch, a, I guess, an attempted murder charge. So, some type of stuff, something like that. Something like that. Uh, Can you talk about that at all? Something like that. Not really. In the year of 2010, Sue Surf would bring himself to the limelight of battle rapping when he went up against rapper Young Ill. This rap battle, where Young Ill boosted Sue Surf's confidence as a rapper, and he even started calling himself the best rapper in the whole penitentiary. While Sue Surf was spending his 20 months in prison, the woman that he was intimate with before his arrest would end up giving birth to his daughter, making him a father. But it wouldn't be until his daughter was three months old that he would eventually be able to go see her. All of these events would prove to have a positive effect on Sue Surf, and following his release from prison, he wouldn't be getting into any more trouble. Instead, he spent all his time and effort on his blooming career as a battle rapper. Sue Surf would have battled against Hitman Holla that would gather 9.7 million views on YouTube over the span of nine years, which is a lot. And then after some time, he moved into a studio and began making mixtapes. In 2016, Sue dropped a 14-track mixtape. As far as being a battle rapper went, Sue Surf was making huge strides to start him. It was looking like he could finally put his dark past behind him and keep riding this wave of success. Sue's career had taken off to the point that he was touring alongside artists such as Joe Buck. But even with these successes, the young rapper's terrible habits would eventually come back to haunt him. Sue Surf was detained in March 2017 on suspicion of attempted murder. Sue Surf would get news of an old friend of his getting shot by someone presumably from a rival gang. Sue Surf would choose to take matters into his own hands and search for this individual and shoot back. Sue Surf would ultimately be charged with the shooting after being taken into custody by the authorities. Man, he may have received a life term in jail if he had been proven guilty of the accusations. Nevertheless, Sue Surf spent a year behind bars while he pursued a fight yet another case illegally, a lot like when he was first detained when he was 18 years old. Sue had become so famous that even in prison, people were asking him for autographs from him. Luckily, he was able to win that case, and the rapper claimed that in the process of defending himself against this accusation, he paid over $60,000 in legal expenses. In 2018, Sue was observed operating a vehicle in a neighborhood that served as the backdrop of several of his ops. Sue Surf claimed that he was just dropping off a friend. Little did he know that his life was in serious danger. As Sue Surf was waiting for the light to turn green, he was attacked by them, who pulled up right next to him in another vehicle. The gunman exited the third automobile behind Sue's and made his way to the passenger seat of Sue's car. Sue didn't know he was in danger until gunshots from the passenger compartment began flying into his automobile. He was shot through the arm that rested in the steering wheel of the car, through the side of his chest, and through his gut. Sue managed to get himself up as his body began to fall into shock. He exited his vehicle and raced to a nearby cab where he begged the driver to take him to a hospital. He yanked open the door and crawled inside the car. Happily, the driver consented and dropped him off at the hospital. Sue would make it through this trauma in the end, but not without the scars to prove it. As mentioned earlier, Sue Surf had been hit in the arm, ribs, and stomach, and the bullet had even harmed his colon. It may have been far worse. However, following all of that trauma, the rapper's life would eventually return to normal. Finally, in January 2019, he released his album, 725. On the iTunes charts, the album debuted at number two, while overall, it peaked at number 29. Sue ran into trouble with the law once more in that same year that he released his debut record. The rapper was detained once more on suspicion of possessing a farm. However, Sue Surf could not have been prepared for what was to come in 2022 by any of those incidents. On October 13th, 2022 at 1.30 p.m., Members of the New York Marshal Service and the New York, New Jersey Fugitive Regional Task Force surrounded Sue Surf and a female guest's Jersey City apartment. Sue and his baby attempted to leave through the back door after discovering the feds who were around, but they soon discovered that the building was encircled by an excessive number of law enforcement officers. Sue returned into the building with the woman. The battle rapper refused to come out, so they spent around an hour inside. Thus, the police also surrounded them. They were forced to contact the New York, New Jersey Fugitive Regional Task Force and the U.S. Marshals hostage and crisis negotiators. Sue Surf spoke with him for a bit before giving up and was taken into custody by the federal authorities. He was brought to the Wessex County Jail once more. The DEA filed a RICO lawsuit against Sue, along with nine other members of the Rolling Sixties Crips. He's accused of racketeering, carjacking, narcotics possession, and distribution, and felon in possession of weapons and ammunition. Sue was also accused of having ties to the criminal organization Enterprise. This claim is clearly related to his membership in the Rolling Sixties Crips, 
After developing a case against Sue and his associates in 2015, the federal government was able to file a 51-page document containing their case. According to the authorities, in April 2018, Sue Surf reportedly organized and gave orders to his fellow Crip members to shoot all the ops and purchase illicit narcotics like M&A. He also allegedly carried out a drug trade using an Instagram group. Federal government asserts that Sue Surf possessed an illicit Beretta PX4 Storm handgun in 40 caliber in July of 2019, and that a month later on Instagram, he mockingly lamented the weapon's seizure by law enforcement. Sue Surf is also accused of having helped in the March 2017 shooting attempt, as we already discussed. According to the police, Sue and another Rolling 60s member shot at a member of the Rolling 40s neighborhood Crips, a rival gang. Sue Surf, a legendary combat rapper, faces a minimum of 20 years in prison and proven guilty on any of these counts. However, he has subsequently entered a not guilty plea. Now, what's the aftermath of all of this? After earlier entering a guilty plea to charges of conspiracy to racketeer influence and corrupt organizations, Sue Surf was sentenced to a mandatory five years in jail. The rapper was charged with crimes related to his involvement in the Rolling 60s neighborhood crib street gang, which carried a maximum sentence of 30 years in jail. However, a U.S. District Court sentenced Cox to five years in federal prison after he entered a guilty plea to conspiracy and to possession of weapons and ammunition by a convicted felon, avoiding a trial and perhaps a heavier term. According to the Daily Voice, Sue was one of 10 Rolling 60s neighborhood Crips members who were charged federally. The allegations were directed at the street gang who were allegedly trafficking controlled narcotics in New Jersey and other states and engaging in violent activities. It said that Cox was a leader in his own gang and that he shot at a member of a rival group in 2017. He was discovered in possession of two loaded weapons two years later. Sue was sentenced to 60 months in prison without the possibility of parole under federal law. The Justice Department also stated that Cox will receive a $15,000 fine and three years of supervised release. For more info on his sentences, Sue Surf was sentenced to 20 years for breaking the RICO Act and an extra 10 years for a firearms violation after entering a guilty plea to two RICO counts after his arrest in October of last year. According to the Rolling Stone, this has to do with what he did as a member of the Rolling 60s neighborhood Crip Street Gang. The occurrences that took place between January 24, 2013 and May 8, 2022, were the subject of the RICO accusations. According to the RICO Act, someone may face charges of racketeering if they're found guilty of two counts of the crime during a 10-year period. The offenders may face a fine of up to $25,000 or a sentence of up to 20 years in prison. Surf avoided a trial by accepting a plea agreement from the government, and as a result, he received a five-year term in federal prison. In a new statement issued by the U.S. Attorney's Office, District of New Jersey, authorities said that Sue was a leader of the Rolling 60s neighborhood Crips from 2015 until September 22, 2022. On March 18, 2017, Sue opened fire on a member of a rival gang. Furthermore, the well-known battle rapper, a convicted felon, was in possession of two loaded guns on July 24, 2019. Sue's manager, while Bellamy, spoke with Fox 5 New York reporter. Lisa Evers, after the rapper was arrested about his impending legal troubles. Evers sent a video on her Twitter page stating, Qua says he's in good spirits and preparing to deal with a federal law enforcement matter. He claims that in addition to planning for his family, he's also thinking about how he'll support his business partners. Qua adds that Sue is hoping for the best but bracing for the worst because he does not yet realize how serious the issue is. Sue may get a maximum sentence of 20 years in jail for the conspiracy to commit racketeering. Regarding the weapon possessions charge, a maximum term of 10 years in jail is anticipated for him. Additionally, there is a punishment of up to $250,000 for each of the charges. The sentence hearing for Sue Surf is set on September 12, 2023. However, following the hearing, as we've already seen, Sue might not spend that much time behind bars as he's only really been given a few years sentence thanks to a combination of his cooperation with the court, some great work from his lawyers, and the gathered supports of the many in the rap stream around him. It might not be exactly the kind of thing you'd expect from a man who's shown to find it hard to leave the criminal years behind him, but it might end up playing towards his own favor. However, it's still too soon to say regarding this case and given what's happened. Sue's career might never recover again, but only time will tell. Sue Surf was a rising star on the battle rap scene before his arrest and incarceration. Jim Jones and Remy Ma were featured on his 2022 album, Disparu, which was released not long after his imprisonment. Wale, Mosey, G. Herbo, Benny the Butcher, Young M.A., and others were among the guests on earlier mixtapes and LPs. All of these prospects, these pending successes, seemingly ruined by a man's apparent addiction to a life of crime. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit that like button. See you in the next video.